Hello, this is Michael with Glossica. If you are new to Glossica, these are a few key points that you can keep in mind. Sentences on Glossica get presented in groups based on their patterns. So if you're working through the sentences and you suddenly notice that sentences are shorter again, then you've probably just started a new pattern. All of the patterns repeat in the higher levels, but the vocabulary is what changes. So the vocabulary is going to get harder. The patterns will pretty much stay the same. The goal on Glossica is you really want to hit fluency. And by doing that, keep track of your metrics, such as the number of reps that you've been doing. Try to set a goal every month of doing 10,000 reps for that month. It's also possible to get up to 30,000 reps in a month, but I just want to stress the fact that you should be doing active practice, not passive practice. It's really easy to let you know the new sessions run and keep going on forever and over and over, and you're not actually doing the practice. That's why I strongly recommend to turn on the recording function, record every single one of the sentences that you're doing. So that makes sure that you have been, you really put in the work on that rep. Now, if you're doing the full practice mode, you'll also get the typing involved as well. Um, I typically don't do that because it's a lot more time consuming and it's harder to hit my 10,000 reps. And frankly, in a lot of the languages that I practice, I just want the listening and, and the speaking ability. Um, I don't really have much of a challenge, uh, you know, reading languages, especially if I already know the vocabulary. So I just t generally just try to focus on being able to, to listen and speak. So everybody's goal is going to be a little bit different. If, it, if your goal is to actually write the language, turn on the full practice mode and you'll get the typing practice in there. Now, the other thing to remember is that if it's a completely new language for you, everything is going to feel completely foreign. Um, the grammar, the pronunciation. And so that's a really big challenge to, to go in and just start jumping and start doing the reps on a completely new language. Uh, you know, a good point of advice that I give people is, well, what's going to happen is you're going to have a lot of mumbling in the beginning, or you're just going to be kind of, uh, you know, trying to uh, say the sentences as, as good as you can, but you're not sure if you're actually hitting the sounds right. If it's a tonal language, you're, pro you're probably tones are all wrong to begin with. Um, you know, here's a really nice anecdote from my own uh, learning Chinese experience is that it was literally like, you know, using the old methods before the internet. I basically, it's basically like listening to the radio. One day after a six or eight months of just constant input on the language, it's like the radio tuned in exactly onto that station. If, if any of you have actually, you know, used a real radio, I guess maybe the example is not good anymore. Um, but radios used to have like this dial so that it would be fuzzy if it was a little bit off. And if it was in the exact right position, the, the sound would come in super clear. And so Chinese was like that for me. Like one day it just turned on super clear. And then all of a sudden I could hear my own pronunciation of how horrible it was. And I could really start to focus on improving my own pronunciation. So sometimes having your own bad pronunciation in the beginning is not... You know, and trying to fix that to be perfect is not actually um, better than improving your listening. So if you can get the language on to the point where I understand almost everything crystal clear and then try to focus on your own pronunciation, that's also good as well. A lot of people try to focus and fix their pronunciation right at the beginning, but they don't have the listening skills to really um, make that really effective. So that's a good thing to keep in mind. So getting back to the mumbling. If you're doing the, the, the mumbling for a while and you really want to work on your pronunciation, what I recommend doing is doing all of the recordings in your sessions. When you finish your session, go out to the dashboard and click on memory, go in and, and open up your recordings and compare them with the native speaker's recordings. Look at the phonics. The International Phonetic Alphabet is listed out there in the phonics and compare, learn those symbols because those symbols will tell you exactly where your, your mouth position should be, how to pronounce every single sound. I'm going to be also be publish uh, a few videos on, on specific languages and, and their pronunciations, which should help out. But, you know, for the most part, what you want to do is try to locate, you know, where those sounds are supposed to be in your mouth and compare them with how the native speaker is speaking and then try to adjust yourself. You know, go back and practice those sentences in the actual uh, comparing the, the, the recording parts 
And then when you go back into your review sessions, you get that sentence again, see if you actually get that sentence better. And, you know, there's actually a pitfall with some of these services out there on the internet that spoon feed you a lot of advice. The trap with the advice is that what we found in, in, and I've done a lot of research on this in the past, is that when students are spoon fed advice, they usually do not take that advice and actually improve. Unless you're like one of the super motivated people who, who can do that well, most people can't. So for example, oh, you made a mistake with your grammar here or your pronunciation here. Most people, they forget and they just don't do anything. How do we fix that? Well, if you provide the tools for the student to actually build awareness and so they they become aware of how they're doing it themselves, they hear their own mistakes and they're a little bit um, you know, taken aback, like maybe a little embarrassed by the mistakes, that's good because then the students are going to come back and say, okay, I know that I was doing something here and it doesn't sound right. I'm going to fix that, I, you know, because I, you feel it inside. It's not somebody telling you, oh, this is what you should do. Um, but you, you realize yourself that this is what I want to do. This is how I want to change. I want to make this change. I'm going to make this change. Uh, and I'm going to say this sentence better next time. That's the advice that I give is try to hold back from people giving you too much advice and try to focus on how to build awareness in how you're actually speaking. And so the tools that we're building, and we are planning on, on releasing some more tools, even in the recording and pronunciation section, is that what we're giving you is not spoon feeding you the advice, but giving you the tools to actually uh, compare and analyze what you're doing uh, compared to the native speaker. And that should be the best way for you to build that awareness. Now, one of the most difficult things about starting a new language that, it, that sounds completely alien to you, jumping into doing reps on Glossika is just going to feel like way too overwhelming. So how can you remedy that? Well, there's a lot of great resources on the internet and there's some sites that collect like a hundred different languages with all the key vocabulary and the little sentence structures and, and you know, here's what a noun looks like, here's what an adverb or adjective and a verb looks like in this language, here's how you conjugate the verbs in that language. And all of this really basic, basic, basic stuff is stuff that you should kind of look over, take a look at those websites, uh, you know, maybe you're learning you know, like Bulgarian, and you go open Bulgarian, and you look at the verb forms, you're like, oh, wow, okay, there's like a million different conjugations of verbs. Um, okay, and then you look at the adjectives, you look at the nouns, oh, okay, nouns are not as bad as other Slavic languages, oh, okay, they have this, um, the word the attached to the end of the noun, like you'd have in Swedish, and so you just learn like how, how those how those things um, go together in the, in the in the sentence. Oh, and the word order is um, where does the subject come? The, where does the verb come? Where does the object come in the sentence? In some languages, they're going to have a little bit of different word order. Now, when you come back into Glossika and you really want to start doing your reps in Glossika, what you need to do is you need to focus on where's the verb in the sentence. When you know where the verb is, you can anchor everything else to that verb. Now, in some simple sentences, what we call equative sentences, like where A equals B or A is B, and you get languages like Russian, they ju they're just not going to have a verb in the sentence at all. And so you, what you do is you just create it like a tiny little pause in your sentence. So you just say, okay, so um, this person pause a something, you know, like this person is a something, you know, creating that, that tiny little pause also gives you that anchor. The, the most important thing is to recognize where the verb is in the sentence. Make sure that you, you, your mind is wrapped around that verb. Like, okay, I'm saying the verb now. This is the verb that I'm saying. And then you're attaching everything else in the sentence to that verb. Now, as your sentences get more and more complex, all of that's going to become very second, uh, very natural, second nature to you because uh, you've already done that at the beginning. And then when you move on and things get more complicated, you, know, you already have that, that feeling for how the sentence is structured and where everything comes. I want to wish everybody a happy new year for 2021. And if you're returning to Glossika, make sure that you download your achievements there for the year 2020, which gives you all of your statistics. Now you can download that. You can share that on social media, but we're only going to, that's only going to stay available on, in your account on the website until January 15th. Now Glossika has another platform called viva.glossika.com. And we're in the process of starting to open up uh, a lot of the applications and starting to accept a lot of the applications into the Viva platform. So if you're if you speak a a language or a dialect from anywhere in the world and it's a, a language you know really well, you grew up with that language and it's not English, uh, then you're welcome to come on to Viva 
help do uh, translations, verify, and do recordings in your language. We're going to be opening up uh, a lot of the applications, but what we've noticed is that a lot of people have gone on Aviva and haven't finished their application process. It's really quick. It's not hard. There's a few quick questions in there. And if it's a new language that we have never done on Glossika, then there's actually less of a test. It's just, you know, uh, just do a real quick, um, give us a quick survey of what your, your background is in the language and a real quick test, and then we'll follow up with you on that. All right. That's all of my updates for this week. I uh, look forward to seeing you next week. Bye.